hello guys welcome to my channel this video is about failure of retaining walls their causes and preventive measures we will learn the conditions of stability of retaining walls which means we will discuss that what conditions are requirements to be fulfilled to prevent the walls from failure the protective measures could be against overturning sliding or collapse crushing and against tensile stresses retaining walls are made to retain either soil or water we will discuss these conditions are requirements one by one but before we start our today's topic if you are new to my channel you are requested to please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates this is part six if you haven't watched the previous parts you are requested to watch the, those videos the link of which is given in the description so let's start our today's topic basically there are four conditions of stability of retaining walls first one is prevention against overturning second one is prevention from tensile stresses third one is prevention from sliding and the fourth one is prevention against crushing we will discuss these conditions one by one first one is prevention against overturning as we discussed in the previous slide there are basically two forces which uh, first one is the horizontal pressure p and the second one is weight w or you can say self weight of the retaining wall so pressure p tends to turn the wall about the toe of the wall which can be called as overturning moment so pressure p tends to turn the wall rotate the wall against uh, about the toe of the retaining wall and the other force which is w and tends which tends to prevent the wall from overturning so these are the actually uh, overturning moments and balancing moments which uh, tend to rotate the wall about the toe of the retaining wall so we will have to take moments about the toe of the wall first one is balancing moment the condition for uh, the stability against overturning is balancing moment should be greater than overturning moment if we take the uh, moment that is force into distance this is the base of the retaining wall and x as we discussed in my previous video x is the distance where the weight w acts on the base so b minus x is the distance of this wall from the toe of the wall okay and p is the distance from toe as you can see over here the distance of p is h divided by 3 so these are the two moments which are responsible for prevention against overturning so if we simplify this we will get this equation b should be greater than p di divided by w into h divided by 3 plus x okay these terminologies uh, are discussed in my previous video as i said earlier that those videos are also very important to understand this video so if we apply the factor of safety factor of safety it should be less than or equal to balancing moment okay and the overturning moment factor of safety is generally taken as 1.5 and it should be less than three times weight of the wall into base minus x distance divided by ph so this condition must be fulfilled to prevent the wall against overturning uh, now comes the second prevention from tensile stresses as we know that every possible effort be made to avoid generation of tensile stresses in gravity retaining walls as we know that this is the type of gravity retaining wall and gravity retaining wall means it it stable itself depending upon the weight of the wall it uh, that's why it is called gravity wall and it is not uh, usually made up of concrete or stone mastery and it is very weak in tension so it is very necessary to avoid to produce or to generate tensile stresses in the gravity wall because it is very weak in tension so to avoid this 
this condition must be fulfilled that is balancing stresses should be less than direct stresses so the formula will become 6 times we now what is e it is also discussed in my previous video this is called as eccentricity which is very important instability of the dam this distance is very important it should be less than w divided by b where b is the base of the wall weight w is the weight of the wall and it will become if we cancel out w from here and from here b will cancel out from this b and we will be left with 6e divided by b which should be less than 1 if we simplify it eccentricity should be less than b divided by 6 okay i hope you are getting my point eccentricity should be less than b divided by 6 if b is the base of this wall okay b is the base of this wall so e should be less than b divided by 6 to avoid tensile stresses in gravity retaining wall r must pass through the middle third position of its base r is resultant resultant of pressure p and weight w which is also discussed in the previous video that r should pass the middle third position of its base okay if it exceeds if r falls at this distance the wall will not be stable against tensile stresses and failure will be caused so the distance e is very important and uh, if this failure occurs this is hit and trial rule okay if you want to stabilize the wall you will have to increase the base of the wall so that the resultant r falls within this distance okay the third condition is prevention from sliding the pressure p tends to push the wall as discussed in the previous slide if p is greater than the product of weight w of the wall and friction mu this is mu between wall and the earth surface then it causes failure so this condition must be fulfilled that frictional force which is between the wall base base of the wall and the underlying soil should be greater than horizontal pressure which is equal to mu w and it should be greater than horizontal pressure p mu is the coefficient of friction between base base of the wall and underlying soil so factor of safety against sliding should be less than or equal to frictional force and horizontal force okay 1.5 is the factor of safety and it should be less than mu w divided by p as we are talking about sliding if the friction between the base and the underlying soil is greater then the wall will be stable against sliding otherwise the sliding failure will occur so these conditions must be fulfilled to prevent the wall from sliding the fourth condition is prevention against crushing okay base of gravity retaining wall experiences maximum stresses as we look at the shape of the wall it is wider at the bottom and the height as you can see in the dams dams are mostly made up of uh, trapezoidal in the shape of trapezoidal or gravity retaining walls and the pressure at the bottom is maximum so maximum stresses are generated at the bottom of the wall if these stresses exceeds the compressive strength compressive strength of the construction material then the failure can occur so it is very important to select the uh, material that you are going to uh, construct the, from which you are going to construct the retaining wall the compressive strength should be greater okay and the other cause could be is mainly due to the settlement of underlying soil that is bearing capacity of the soil if the bearing capacity of soil is lower than the weight of the wall then what will happen the wall will settle down due to the weight of the wall so bearing capacity must be kept in mind so the conditions for this stability is maximum compressive strength should be less than allowable bearing capacity compressive strength of the uh, you can say the the stress causes by the weight of the wall should be less than allowable bearing capacity of the soil so this conditions must be fulfilled w divided by b into 1 plus 6 e that is eccentricity that is b is the base of the wall should be less than allowable bearing capacity so these are the few conditions which which must be fulfilled to avoid the 
failure of the retaining walls so that's all for today in the end you are again requested if you are new to my channel please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates that's all for today